Hey everyone, Yan Zhao. I got Art T Bear's Chrono Mechanics last night, and it's time for another sad car comic review video. <laughs> So I ordered this quite some time ago. I I can't quite remember when Art came over and said he's comic skate and start advertising. A year ago, six months ago, uh, more than six months I think. But uh, it is finally here. Art T. Bear. Did anybody else used to think his name was pronounced Thibbert? I don't know why I did. So I first became aware of Art. Back in the early 90s, he was inking a lot of stuff when the Image Guys were still at Marvel. Uh, he did a lot of X Factor, I believe, which at the time had Will Spertatio doing the pencils. It was a great combination. Uh, the first thing is, I was kind of surprised by this style. You know, I would have expected his first book out would be very image-like. But this is very cartoony. So the book itself, it's... Uh, Perfect bound, very high quality, glossy cover. The inside pages are thick, glossy. I don't see any problems with fluting or anything. So mechanically, I guess you'd say, or for the physical product, it's absolutely great. Now, would I say this is all ages? Uh, maybe. I mean, I'd certainly say if you were reading X-Men comics in the 80s, so like 13 years old or so, it would be good. They do mention drugs a few times. Uh, they do mention that Doug is basically sleeping with a lot of his fans. Uh, he gets a bra thrown in his face at one point. Uh, the, the thing to me that is excellent is the dialogue. Now, everybody seems different. Let me just go back here. So we have Caravaggio. Well, I never. And then you have Oot. You hurt Oot, gasshole. Oot hurt you. And then uh, Caravaggio replies, Bless my meatballs. So if you like cheese, if you are offended rather by cheesy Italian stereotypes, maybe not for you. Overall, I would say it's a great book. One of the things I like about this as opposed to a lot of the other first books in a series, no cliffhanger. This is a complete story. If Art, for some reason, never makes another one, you're not left wondering what's going on. There's no, uh, as Anna, the Star Wars girl, uh, said about another book, there's no cliffhanger blue balls. This is a fantastic book. I do hope that there's more. I absolutely would buy it. Come on, Art. When are you going to release another one? Uh, but nice. All right, so check the insides out. Writer, artist, Art T. Bear. Writer, Pamela T. Bear. I don't know if Pamela's his wife or his daughter. He has his daughter on, on Twitter a bit. So it could be her. Not really sure. Color by Peria Pillai with Hack Shack Color. I don't know what Hack Shack color is. Unlike my usual videos where I complain about color, this is actually decent. All right, so it starts off. So the book itself starts off at Space Station. It introduces us to the Chrono Mechanic or Chrono Incorporator, I should say. And uh, hey, we got a problem. Something's up. And then we go into a very interesting talk about Doug. Now, for anyone who doesn't recognize, this is Geraldo Rivera. There's a lot of very funny personalities, I guess you'd say, that show up, or homages, or Easter eggs. I don't know quite how you want to describe it. It's a little bit weird that a lot of them are kind of from the 90s. I know Geraldo is still around, but I don't know what that guy does anymore. But, uh, so we have him. Over here we have Johnny Carson. I mean, Johnny hasn't had a show since, what, like, the early 90s? And he hasn't done anything since? Hi-oh! 
But we get introduced to the main character, Doug. Doug is from the backwoods of West Virginia to Beverly Hills. So he's skinny, fiery headed, uh huh, gap tooth, lucky, uh, I don't know. Uh, and he's become a rock and roll sex symbol. Are rock and rollers today still sex symbols? So this is kind of what I mean. Maybe he's not from our time. Maybe this is actually supposed to take place a bit in the past. I'm not really sure. You got a tribute to uh, Michael Jackson's hair catching on fire uh, and he extinguished it with Pepsi. <clears throat> that was great. And so we go through more and more of him. Now, the first thing I thought was if he's from West Virginia, where's the meth? Why isn't he on meth? But it's okay. A few pages later, he talks about not taking red pills or blue pills anymore. So that's the West Virginia I know. All right. So he just gets sucked out of his reality and he's hooked up with these guys. Let me see if we get a better picture. They're all these very kind of muscular kind of construction workers. So here we have Caravaggio who was a painter and he hates Leonardo da Vinci because Leonardo da Vinci is a copier. We have Oot who uh, made fire. And then we have uh, Zin. That's right, Zin. Zin is some kind of a squid-like alien something who worships the gem. Is that the gem? Uh, they never really explain what's up with the gem, but it's some kind of mystical device. Now, I think it's very funny that this is a pyramid shape, and especially if you go back into the 80s when crystals were a huge thing, uh, they thought that the shape of the pyramid had special spiritual powers and all sorts of other ridiculousness. So Doug is taken and he is supposed to be the new mechanic. Uh, they had these guys are part of a work crew. Another one of their members, Miguel, died. Everybody loved Miguel. He's like the Mary Sue of the group, I guess. He did everything. He made guitars. And Doug is pulled out and he's kind of like WTF. So we go on and eventually find out that the machinery that keeps time in the universe is breaking down. So you have different time periods overlapping. You have, um, this is a 50s diner that ends up in the past. So it's prehistoric time. We see a bunch of dinosaurs. Not gonna show the whole thing, but um, there's a rival group, the Quick E Fixes, and their whole thing is better and faster. So this Chrono group is trying to fix the um, problem with the machine. These guys crash in with their ship, their Chrono ship, and try to fix the machine, but they're doing a really crappy job. They're, I guess you'd say they're like scabs where our crew is Union. <clears throat> fight breaks out we have this dinosaur that's following them around which they named Fichosaurus uh, and she is very upset she went to therapy for many years uh, she's got this they don't really explain why she has this thing but she has like an antenna sticking out of her head and this is Doug after he powers up in his chrono suit takes it off apparently the dinosaur's name is Karen and she's told by her therapist that she needs to be more assertive in letting people know what she wants and needs. So it <clears throat> goes back to normal dinosaur. But the timeline goes back. Somehow he's lucky. And they find what I assume would be another member of the crew. It's a chronomite. Chronomites supposedly are... They fly through the galaxy and they eat 
your ship or they eat the chronological machinery. But this guy is actually a fixer, not an eater. Then after Doug realizes, yeah, he should be a chrono mechanic, decides to join with the group and they give him Miguel's guitar. So this book, I uh, highly recommend it. This is exactly what independent comics should be. So what do you think of Chrono Mechanics? Yay, nay? Are the references a little bit too old for younger people to grasp? I don't know. Leave your comment down below. If you like this video, click like, subscribe to the channel. One of these days, I'm going to get through my backlog of books to review, and I'll be back soon.